not all of them really work. Golden Boy. No, I wasn't always a Golden Boy fan, but man, did he crush it at the finals as an MC. He was such a good MC. Holy smokes. They've had some trouble with the initial setups from the London Spitfire. Matt, Carpe was five final blows, ten deaths Cheers, for Jack. all of Eichenwald. He's the star for the Philly Fusion, but he went real quiet. I suppose they need him to step up a little bit here, but Hotfa stays in with Poco, so you have, again, that flex player and Hotfa. This time going for the Soldier 76, potentially. Yeah, I saw the, the reaction video. We'll Pretty see the crazy. We'll see the top of your screen. The Fusion are actually on that right-hand side. London on the left, and we'll be defending. There it is. Look at that. Easy done. So they're going to try and break open with a fairly mobile composition, Matt. Will it be Lucio for Neptuno? Curious indeed from Philly. Yeah, I know. you don't have enough healing, I think, when Neptuno playing Lucio. You're just going to give a speed boost, potentially. And then switch over to Mercy. Let's see. Or maybe they decide to go out with a Lucio. Are they actually... Are they scouting or something like that? What is Philly doing here? Uh, no. Looks like he's going back to the spawn. So maybe you see some more changes. What the heck? This is a weird form of scouting that I've never seen before. 76. Yeah, they have the UI back. Potentially out of the gates. We'll see in a moment. Obviously, at the top of your screen, the Fusion are actually on that right-hand side. London on the left. And we'll be defending. There it is. Look at that. Easy done. So, okay. So they're going to try and break open with a fairly mobile composition, Matt. Will it be Lucio for Neptuno? Curious indeed from Philly. Yeah, I know. You don't have enough healing, I think, when Neptuno... So is Hotba going to run like somewhere, or...? Is this like an attempt to... Because the only time... We've seen it a couple times where like Fury was actually the one who got caught out by a May pick here. Like May walled off the window and prevented Fury from being able to escape. I forget which map this was actually in, but this isn't like meant to catch a scouting diva or something like that. Is this meant to confuse the scout? This is probably meant to confuse the scout. That's what this is. That's what this is. So Fury is here scouting. So they're showing, they're showing an Arisa composition here, but as soon as they make Fury fuck off, they're going to go back and swap. So London Spitfire is going to expect an Arisa comp, but they're actually going to run into goats. So that's what this is. They're not trying to punish the scouter. They're trying to feed misinformation to the scouter. Hmm. I don't think I've seen an example of this yet. At least not such an explicit example of tomfoolery just gonna give a speed boost. fury is gone they, like the other problem is though that the composition will show up in 10 seconds they're gonna have to, to go with swap to nope. looks like he's going back to five seconds until the composition becomes public anyway so maybe they're expecting london spitfire to because because if you were london spitfire and what's happening up here is that in philadelphia so oh god my brain in Philadelphia Fusion's case, one of the only characters that can both scout and remain a, a viable part of both the Orisa three tank composition and Goat's composition is D.Va. So D.Va doesn't have to swap. D.Va can get the intel as well as force Fury to fuck off. And then if they're doing this, the proper response from the London Spitfire with the Orisa is actually to hold farther forward um, to not give the Philadelphia Fusion adds as much space, which makes them weaker to a GOATS composition, which does want to rush them down. Spawn, so maybe you see some more you changes. Know, my brain. Oh, okay, a lot of changes. So, whoa. All right. So did London Spitfire take the bait and hold farther forward? So they're going to play three supports, three tanks. They're going to play the Reinhardt, Zarya, and Diva, and they're going to play Neptuno on Lucio for that speed boost. Hotfa will play Moira, can provide a... And they're not even rushing onto them anyway. We didn't really see a... Get a good angle, did we? You're just gonna give a speed boost, potentially, and then switch over to Mercy. Let's see, or maybe you know. they decide to go out with a Lucio. Uh, no. So they are holding a little Looks bit farther like going up. back to the spawn. So maybe you see some more changes come through. Okay, a lot of changes. So whoa. All right. So they're going to play three supports, three tanks. They're gonna play the Reinhardt, Zarya, and Diva, and they're going to play Neptuno on Lucio for that speed boost. Hotba will play Moira can provide. They're going up right side anyway. A really good amount of AOE healing. Keep everybody up, and then Carpe will play Brigitte. Now, I like to call this what to the fight. Okay, so they for, they're holding on the bright side here. And what are they, they're doing, you know, London loves this composition. London loves, the, OWL broadcast refuses to call it goats. Why won't the commentators call it goats? Um, I don't know, goats it was a very controversial team. Also, I don't think it's, um, you know, how many people have been kind of asking what's goats? Goats itself 
you know, dive composition tells you what the composition is trying to do. Goats is just such a strange name. You know, it's not implying anything about the play style. It's named after a contender's trials team and a very controversial contender's trials team. So, hey, Valkia, how you doing? Hey, I haven't seen you around for weeks now. Good to see you, Valkia. When it comes to Hanzo, Winston and Hammond do best when you keep track of cooldowns and voicing to your team you're on the Hanzo. If Hanzo doesn't have Storm, he's a lot easier to kill. Well, that's in general, regardless of you are. Same goes for his jump. Yes, but that doesn't seem anything revolutionary, I suppose. Oh, you took a break from OW. That's why I didn't see you. Why was Goats controversial? Because they had two people on their team who were banned. Three, actually. For, was it a account sharing, boosting, or toxicity, or something like that? They were basically the villains of Overwatch. How you doing, Jordan? Five figures say to the face. Comp. Then why did they use the term C9? Great point. C9 was also way less controversial. It was also way more well-known than uh, GOATS. Philadelphia Fusion are all going to play very close together. Now that is a vulnerability. Okay, so they're holding, and their Arisa isn't on the high ground. Ability in a sense, but London Spitfire don't have a lot of tools to really So they're going to go right onto Gestures. Them for that. Look at them just barrel through here like a big old meatball of death. The first time big old meatball of death. Well, this Carpe's in trouble. Down from the high ground. Gonna have Carpe survives, but Poco dies in the meantime. To play near the point. First two kills, though, go in favor of the London Spitfire. Both snipers murdering in profit, able to pick up a kill apiece. Now, that didn't work out for the Philly Fusion at all, Matt. You could see we were on board with Hopma for all that time. He was obviously trying to heal the rest of his team on that Moira, and that was... Oof, not so they got really spread out here. And I think, like, Carpe ending up... Carpe and Hotba getting split like this... Um, prevents them putting so much pressure. Not only does Hotba have to heal Carpe and only Carpe, like Moira's piercing heal wants to be healing everyone pretty much at the same time. And with Hotba, the primary source of healing being on Carpe and Carpe only means that there's so little healing onto other targets, which are going to be the primary focus, like D.Va, for example. Now, Brigida is usually the linchpin of the GOATS composition, and where if you are playing like a Pharah sniper, you want to be shutting down the Brigida as hard as possible. But Neptuno gets dropped as well. And look at how low everybody else is on the Philadelphia Fusion because Hotba had to go with Carpe. So I think it's Carpe's positional error as well as Hotba committing to saving Carpe through his error that causes the rest of the team to die here. You know, if Carpe was able to stay on a target with the rest of the team, the rest of the tanks were able to cover for Carpe to take less damage where they were able to like continue focusing down either Bedosin or um, Jester, this would have gone a lot better. But, you know, Bedosin has take a breather, which gives him 300 health, but more importantly, makes him take half damage. Then we also have Jester, who has the same ability with Fortify, where he takes, you know, half damage as well, especially if Jester um, fortifies while in armor. You know, he can take like a quarter damage compared to usual, which makes the Mercy's effective healing um, 240 HPS, which is pretty silly. So... You need all the sort. You need all the damage in your entire composition focused on a single target. If you are going to burn through a composition like this, especially when there's only two viable targets for you, can we please address the gesture on the roof? I don't. I don't know what there is to say about gesture being on the roof. Other than how did he get there? Did he get like bounce pinned up there? Keep everybody up, and then Carpe will play Brigitte. Now, I like to call this what do the five figures say to the face? Comp, Philadelphia Fusion are all going to play very close. It must have been a pin that knocked him up there. Together. Now, that is a vulnerability. Because there's not even a halt. He couldn't have ru he couldn't have rode a halt. In a sense, but London Spitfire don't have a lot of tools to really punish them for that. Look at them just barrel through here like a big old meatball of death. And the first target seems to be gesture. Well, this will force the London Spitfire. Yep, sort of charged. Sort of charged. Down from the high ground, they're going to have There he is. Gesture got booped up there by Sato's charge. To play near the point. The first two kills, though, go in favor of the London Spitfire. Both snipers murdering in profit, able to pick up a kill apiece. Now, that didn't work out for the Philly Fusion at all, Matt. Calculated. Indeed. Indeed. On that Moira, and that was well, suicide. So I think that was Carpe and Hot Bazaar that caused that attack to go so poorly. Of his team's damage in that fight. <laughs> Can't yeah, spell Sato without sad. For the next fight, I shot Ooh, there nice, from Murdering. Nice you love to see it. Beautiful. And Murdering stepping up. Carpe, a little bit quiet right now, which definitely means that Murdering gets to flex his muscles a little bit more when Carpe's not keeping him in check in that Widow battle. 
<laughs> Five pictures taken moments before disaster. Man, all Jester has to do is throw a halt in there, and they're all fucked. We're gonna go again with the. Oh, there it is. the dragon strike. They're going in. Oh, this is gonna be nasty. Young people look away. Oh, Young people look away. Three. Oh, that was bad. I think. I think Philly expected it to be going in the stairs, so they tried to like double back, but then they doubled back right into the path of the dragon. And he'd like to add some more to the tally, but Ugh. the damage is Oof. already done. Philly devastated. Oof. Matt, I'd said beforehand that yeah. the London Spitfire don't have the tools to punish a close together composition from Philly. I just got proven wrong. That dragon strike wrecked them. Yeah, they try and get to the wrecked close quarters, them. use the speed I to get one. by, but the halt from Gesture keeps them there for just a little bit. I think they're going to be Mikio playing around the Zarya shot. Graviton search whenever they get it. They do have a coalescence from Hot Mother Moira Ultimate. Heals and does damage at the same time. Could provide some extra... Oh, the halt almost gets him again. Carpe, with Carpe stays alive here. I don't really like this plan of going up on this high ground. I don't know why they're going here with goats. And the fact that they're going to have to drop off this high ground anyway. But then the two snipers have perfect sightline onto that high ground. So it's not like you can leave anybody up there or you want to leave anybody up there anyway. So this seems like a really long and convoluted path that doesn't gain a ton of value. With the rally as well, some armor for everybody is too. So you're going to be able to out heal the London Spitfire, just whether you can get any kills. All right. Okay, rally so they're now not going through Carpe. high, Extra rotating around. The rest of fusion that's going to help them be more durable in this fight. Is that a supercharged whole hog or just a whole hog? Where are you? Just a whole hog. They have super here. Why aren't they using it? Why aren't they super whole hog? Hardo barreling forward, but he's being knocked back here. The whole hop by Bedoshin, you can see displacing the entirety of the Philly Fusion. Earthshatter comes down, but Bedoshin was the only one that was really knocked. Sato, though, big. Sato gets the charge onto Gesture and finishes. Connection on Gesture from downrange. Head lands a massive charge on the right heart. And Fury now has to abscond to the high ground. The Fusion can set up on the point where they missed Nuss leaking into the backside. Uh, uh, uh oh. Spaghetti oh. <laughs> Bringing Gesture back into the fight. He's I feel like a significant I feel like a significant portion of Philadelphia Fusion's team fight victories have been based off of diva bombs. I there's a lot of pointing to like Philadelphia Fusion has like consistently lost the team fights where when their their diva has not come up huge. And even when their diva bombs, you know, do get two or three, we've still seen what three times this series so far where the D.Va bomb either killed two or three to start a fight, and then they still lost. Like, I thought that this was actually a much closer match when I was watching this in person, but watching it again, London was really thoroughly in control of these maps the entire way through. Later in this game, this map gets fucking crazy. And it was a foregone conclusion after I do want to watch that again. I'm interested why they didn't super, though. Because this would have been a perfect opportunity to supercharge. The Spitfire, just whether you can get any kills. All right. Rally now being used by Carpe. Extra armor given out to the rest of the fusion. Because one of the things, and a lot of people don't know this, but um, supercharger, again, everything 50% damage. But does anyone know how much fall off there is on whole hog? How much fall off is on whole hog? There's none. There's zero. There is no fall off on whole hog. There's just spread. So you can catch, like, everyone here. You can knock them back, and the pellets just do a fuck ton of damage. So the whole cog comes out here, and they have super. And it's one of the best combinations here is knocking them back, you know, spamming them out from damage. Just getting so much more done here. Getting knocked away. It doesn't do enough damage. They're actually able to close the distance. And then Sato gets knocked around the shield so he could land that hammer anyway. It was the only one that was really knocked. Sato, though, big connection on gesture from downrange. Head lands a massive charge on the right heart. And Fury now has to abscond to the high ground. The fusion can set up on the point where they missed Nuss leaking into the backside, bringing gesture back into the fight. He's punched for that one. And there it is. It's a Pogo bomb. And he's found himself two more. The DC on Fury. And it was a foregone conclusion after that point. And that was a really nice grab from EQO. A fusion of foul they were looking for. Some extra fuel in the tank. <laughs> and they're now in control of point eight. Some really nice luck there from the Philly Fusion. So Pogo's actually getting D-Mech. 
Supercharger, or sorry, Coal Essence only does 70 damage, right? Coal Essence only does 70 damage, so it would have required them to keep the Coal Essence on the Supercharger for three seconds instead of on any tank or anything like that. So even if they do use Supercharger, it's kind of like bait for the Coal Essence. It's not like the worst trade-off ever. You'd still get three seconds of plus 50% damage, whole hog as well as everybody else on your team. As a self-destruct, decide to use the self-destruct. Like, it's way better than just not using Supercharger and then having to swap off. I checked cheers and whatnot between games. EQO just throws the Graviton Surge right on top of it, sucks in four players, Poco's able to get two with it, and that'll complete point A here. Okay, so do they have the opportunity to snowball here? Not really, because they use their bomb and their Graviton. They do have their Lucio ultimate. But on the other side, London Spitfire has Dragon. So, what's going to go on here? And they've also swapped onto the Mercy and the Ana. So, they're not running... You know, they're not running their standard defense. So we're seeing Dive here with uh, the Farah and the Hanzo. And then the Ana for the second support here. So Ana is really good against Goats. Especially when you have an Ana on a high ground position. Because one of the weaknesses of the Goats composition is, of course, they don't have any long range. So they can't really attack against a Farah. The Farah can just sit there uncontested forever. Like Poco is really the only guy who can attack the, de or the, the Farah because Poco can boost up to where Birdring is. If it gets low enough, EQO can beam him a little bit, but other than that, nothing. The Farah is uncontested here. And then the second major threat, you know, so you have no long range from Goats, and you have no high ground either. So with Bedosin sitting on the high ground there, he's basically safe, and he can throw antis uncontested. The antis can get blocked by Sato and Carpe, they can get eaten by Poco and cleansed by EQO, but still, if you land, like, a you know, an anti on Carpe or something, and they can't cleanse it with the projected bubble, then that is just a huge opportunity. Like, Jester will sacrifice himself to jump in and take him out with the assistance of Birdring here. So this is an anti-goat swap right here from London Spitfire. For the Philadelphia Fusion, they have a sound barrier. They have the opportunity to kind of steamroll on through this map, set a good time. The second point located inside this factory means the Fusion just have to get in the face. Of so there's Neptuno's barrage to keep things alive. Prophet is going to drag the in... Opponents. Just the point itself. So that's fine. That won't get a lot of value. Which means that Philly, they want to kind of like... You want to force the issue on the point uh, as much as you possibly can because you are in a war of both time and resources. And in fact, the longer that the this fight goes on without being resolved, the more and more um, that value will shift in favor of the London Spitfire. Because the Philadelphia Fusion are going to be... They have a lot of healing but they're basically just surviving over the size of their health pools and the rate of their healing. You know, London Spitfire is going to get so much ult charge, they're in a much better place. And when we have things like Birdling, eventually Birdling is going to get barrage if he doesn't just kill people. Eventually an anti is going to land on somebody. Eventually Prophet's going to find a headshot, something like that. So Fusion is in a race against time, and they want to, um, you know, they want to, I don't know what I said, boops rain from above. Birdring's going to get barrage. But, uh, you know, they want to force this fight on point. Behind and he now uses the sound barrier. Gives some overshield for a short time to the rest of the Philly Fusions. They have to fight a long, protracted engagement here. This is the kind of fight where your healing resources need to be dialed up to 11 and so far. So Birdring does take up no, two, no, eventually, right? Nuss is really low here. And this is, this is really good. So if they, what? No, go away. Um... So, like, when you are playing like something, if Poco knows that Nuss is low, unless he gets safe or gets healed by Bedos, and he is going to drop, because they can just prevent this recharge. That's so good, but Neptuno is now missing one of three. Poco takes out Profit. Nuss is starting to regen, and I don't know where he is at the moment. Three of the healers in the Philadelphia Fusion missing in action now. Sato goes for the Earth Channel, but doesn't really connect it. There was a barrier that blocked a lot of that shockwave. Here comes the Coalescence from Hopper in the backside, though. I know well, you're thinking it's not a Kamehameha. It's healing and damage available there. <laughs> Hotba. Coal Essence is not for healing. Coal Essence is an anti-air turret. With that beam of light, <laughs> it's amazing that Nuss is still alive. Really nice block there from Sato onto the anti -nade. He slept Poco, didn't use an anti immediately, and then Nuss is going to get the res. Nuss survived this entire fight, really? Fusions that have to fight a long, protracted engagement here. This is the kind of fight where your healing resources need to be dialed. Where's Nuss? 
Nuss is flying around the right side of point. So Nuss is in the open here. But Poco is... God, if that fire strike had landed. <laughs> Did you see where Poco was? Did you guys see where Poco is? <laughs> All the fucking way over here. <laughs> he gets profit. But Nuss is able to survive because of this. Hotbutt isn't able to finish off the 1 HP Nuss. The Fire Shark from Sato misses. Poco's just off on his own. Three of the healers in the Philadelphia Fusion missing it. Big slam. Now. Sato goes for the Yonchana, but doesn't really connect it. There was a barrier that blocked a lot of that shockwave. Here comes the coalescence from Hotbutt on the backside, though. I know well, you're thinking it's not a Kamehameha. It's healing and damage available there with that beam of light. And Hopper removes Birdry now from the fray. Trying to now... That orb, if this was a, if this was like a, a Moira Vod or something like that, I'd be pretty pissed at that orb. Uh, because Nuss is not only in Valkyrie, but he can fly over, uh, around from that. So it's going to be extremely difficult for a Moira to take out uh, Nuss yeah, in this regard. So not only does Hotba launch the orb, but then he realizes the futility of his action. Poco's not on him either still. He tries to stay above ground with that mercy. Then he swaps back onto him. Poco's, I think Poco's boosters got canceled here. Yes, yes, Poco's boosters got cancelled here. Have the numbers advantage here, Matt. They're in control. Yeah, Profit comes out on May. You just want to have the May to stall out a little bit. Nice Nuss little block. Profit's ice block doesn't go on to point. That's unfortunate. I think is gonna get walled here. Ekio is pressuring the May, but I think he's gonna get walled. For the res. We'll no? Did he already wall? So I missed a lot of shit. So Papa took up Bird Ring. Nuss is still alive, which is just nuts. To me. So they drop Gesture. So Wall was already used. Wall was already used. That's why Ikyo didn't get Wall, and he wasn't afraid of it. But Osin slept Poco. And Nuss is going to res Gesture back up. God, Nuss clutched this so hard. And Gesture is going to get Primal off this too. So Bird Ring's Barrage takes out Sato, and the bomb is one of the things is, like, using this bomb in the barrage, I'm not sure if this was coordinated, but the barrage itself is going to prevent anyone from, like, hiding from the bomb in this area. Oh, no. Poco goes up, doesn't, isn't in time to actually take out Bird Ring, and the bomb takes out EQO. Kobe, anybody? EQO removed by that one over the top by Fury, and the Spitfire break the Fusion's hold on that point. London now... So I think Poco being on the wrong target, Hotbit being unfamiliar with Moira. Um, you know, we do have Neptuno on Mercy, but he didn't, like, Neptuno didn't seem to be doing that bad on, on Lucio. But, uh, and then Carpe has already swapped off. What was Carpe on? Carpe was on Brigida. Right, Carpe was on Brigida. All the point out, but you see the main wall that goes down there and splits off some of the players. Gus was able to get the res there on a gesture. Nice little... Okay, are they staying? They're kind of going on a Widow variant of goats now. Okay, that's fine. Bird Ring is going to answer back by swapping onto the uh, the Hanzo there, and Prophet is staying on May. Interesting. Back smack there on the post. And this is pre May buff, so this isn't. This is still fall off May. Go to eliminate him. They're going to stay on May. May is very good at you know splitting off teams from each other and put down the wall and slow as well. So. When... And like Blizzard is a very fast charging ult, a very fast charging ult. Um, so. Will he get Blizzard and swap? If, you know, I would expect as much. I actually don't remember whether or not he swaps back off uh, May or whatnot, but I would expect a Blizzard and then a swap. Philadelphia, their comp wants to stay close together. May's a great counter to that. Profit playing the Already up to 83. It's a very fast charging ult here. Trying to put some fusion players on ice. So Nano goes on to Gesture. He already has his Primal, though. So why is this? What is Gesture going to do with this? With this uh, sorry, Nano. Nano goes on to Gesture. What is he going to use with this? And Jester also drops down now. A lot of damage being thrown out his way, but the test counter the Winston spread. Good enough. The because that was an anti, right? Yeah, the anti landed on Sato. So 
Bedosin <laughs> gives Gesture Nano and then anti Sato. So Bedosin is, you know, both London Spitfire supports doing fantastic work here. Bomb comes out that won't find anyone. EQO's personal is used. Prophet's like, hello, you used your personal, you're now dead. This time another poker Prophet doesn't quite yield the same results as prior. Prophet is forced back, but now the blizzard is getting a bit chilly in here, ladies and gentlemen. And the fusion of frozen stiff, not with fear, but with the elements. And they're able to push them back once more. Two minutes and 33 seconds left on the clock and profit. That was awesome. So are we going to see swaps? Philadelphia finally going on to their Morse at Neptuno. Is he going to stay on barrier? He'll probably stay Lucio for barrier and then swap Mercy after that. So they're in a transitional composition right now. And then uh, London Spitfire. I would expect Profit to swap, especially now that they are back onto Double Sniper here. Bedosin nice off of the Ana, because there's Goats is no longer in place. They don't need that. The Transcendent's really useful for stalling out, you know, and they don't even really need it right away since Jester and Fury both have their tank ultimates. So Profit, are you going to be going back to swap? Yeah, I hope so. Tried to use the Graviton Surge during that fight, but it's eaten up by Fury. So Sato gets, where is Bedosin? Oh, Bedosin flanked. You guys can't see it because I'm sitting on it. But Bedosin is right under me. Right here is where Bedosin is. Bedosin's right here. Bedosin's right here. He's going to go here and then here and land the ante. You can see here on the map as the engage comes on in. EQO will use that so Graviton the Nano, Surge. Gets absolutely lands the purple onto right Sato. And Sato just gets taken out here. So Prophet has swapped onto the Genji. So again, uh, Volskaya, another area where the sight lines aren't nearly as long. And Genji actually can use his Swift Strike to get onto targets or finish off targets. So yeah, they're going to be playing the Hanzo Genji here. So much damage the there. Genji's positioning has been fantastic. And like London's sitting pretty here. They've got both tank ultimates. Philly just did a full swap. They didn't even decide to stay with that barrier. So London Spitfire, despite using a lot of ultimates and making swaps their own, the attackers have even fewer ultimates, and the, and the ultimates that the London Spitfire do have are their tank ultimates. So they can actually kind of like live without primal or without having transcendence, and that isn't going to be an issue because they have both tank ultimates. Fantastic so far in that Winston. Not only just displacing the fusion map, but staying alive in the process. Once again, the fusion encroaching. Ooh, what booped gesture here? Firing at Winston. Not only just displacing the fusion map, but staying alive in the process. Once again, the fusion encroaching very close. Poco landed the little knockback. Or was that? Yeah, I guess it was Poco. Close to enemy territory here. Trying to find an opening. Looks like that wasn't it. Casado jumps straight back out. It's interesting to me that Fury would use his bomb aggressively there. We've seen, like, there's a couple times where Fury uses his bomb so very, very aggressively, but this is not a situation in which I would have expected an aggressive bomb to be launched. Not only just dis is this to cover for Jester's fuck to dive? Placing the fusion map, but staying alive in the process. Because Fury doesn't usually bomb aggressively like this, especially on 2CP defense. Once again, the fusion encroaches. So Poco fucks up Jester's dive. But Fury throws the bomb right away. Oh, okay, so it's not a great is a meant to cover for Jester's dive here, and then Sato's gonna jump in and bubble it to keep his team alive. Very close to enemy territory here. Trying to find an opening. Looks like that wasn't it, because Sato jumps straight back outside. You notice that they've left EQO alone on the high ground here, and that's a little bit dangerous. You see that the Spitfire identify a player on his own and try and capitalize, but now they have to fight for the entirety of the Philadelphia fusion. They go deep, they can- And Gesture also used Primal, but he's feeding pretty hard, right? He's all the way down to, like, look at his health bar after he uses Primal here. Looks like that wasn't it, because Sato jumps straight back outside. You notice that they've left so EQO alone on the high ground here, and that's a little bit dangerous. You see that the- Primal, but watch how fast he gets burnt after this. Spitfire identify a player on his own and try and capitalize, but now they have to fight for the entirety of the Philadelphia Fusion. They go deep. Brant, all the way down. They commit fully to the fight. And for the Spitfire, despite being the defensive team, Matt, the defensive team, should I say, looks like the best. Uh, the Korean commentators say that it was a way to delay by fright due to advantage, which cuts Philly's pace. That's strange. But um, as a shot caller, how should I play around tank ults, assist my team in doing so? One of the main things is that you don't want one of your, your support to use a support ultimate in order to keep a tank alive who has their tank ultimate. Because tanks will normally play more aggressive when they do have their ultimates if they are survival ultimates like Gesture or Fury. So, for example, if you have a Transcendence, you don't want to be popping Transcendence to save a D.Va who just used Bomb to remac. So one of the things you want to do is just do a quick plan about 
you know, have a tank communicate whether their action is based on using the tank to survive or whether they do need the support ultimate to stay alive and use it later, etc. So just in the same way that you would want to prevent the overlap of support ults, you also want to prevent the overlap of a support ult and a, a tank ultimate. Like trancing at the same time that you're using primal is such a horrendous loss of value, it's, it's just atrocious. Absolutely. Defense is a good offense. Yes, they push all the way in. Profit getting those dash resets so you get the kill with the Genji dash. It resets off of the cooldown. You're able to just dart dash through dash opponents. Dash. So you did see Philly like, make it. Okay, so one minute and 30 seconds remaining. Birdring's coming up on his ultimate. It's not as helpful because you don't have anything to combo with. So you're either going to use it to split, which isn't really useful here, um, or zone. So splitting isn't really useful against a high mobility team, which dive is. So unless you can, like, catch somebody off guard by sonicking through a wall and then dragging them or something like that, then it's mostly going to be used to zone out areas. Friday styles. Yes, I read subs and cheers after maps. Philly. And at halftime, so only a minute and a half left. Changed up, they have Carpe playing Widow. Golden Boy did do the what face during the finals, yeah. Hanzo uh, going to be the call for EQO here. We can take a look at the kills from Profit yet again. The melees, there's one dash reset, gets that kill, goes for another. Profit extends very deeply there. Sato trying to pick him up here and again, harassing that Genji. There's the dragon used to zone a little bit of the high ground. So this is kind of like one of the cool things about using dragon is just using just the top of it to zone so that people can't stand. Like if you don't want people to be here, it's not like they can play floors the lava and constantly jump. Like it's still going to kill them. So you only need the very top piece of the dragon to control this area. And then the rest of it is just to, so you kind of get like two for one. You zone the high ground and you still put the majority of the dragon into this bottom left area right here. Here's a dragon strike being used from the back lines of the London Spitfire. It forces the away, he doesn't find any kills, it goes down along this Prophet. He mm -hmm. reaches for the blade, he's found Poco. But he's found Poco! And then dies. He trades his life in the process now. The Chino brings Poco back, so that now puts the fusion at a player advantage. Carpe finding Fury, also going to help with... This... Okay. This is way more Pog champ than it looked. They showed the replay of this later. Holy fuck, these shots from Birdring were crazy. This one, but Birdring is doing work. These shots, it was crazy. And on hot bar, and this will slow the fusion down when it looked like they had an opening to go on with. Well, the fusion used Yeah, like they were they were pretty close to counter pushing there, and then Birdring's like, nope, nope, pew, pew, deletes Algorithm two of them. Tells you they potentially thought they could make something out of this. Carpe's on a flank. Yeah, like Neptuno used his Valkyrie to try and counter push that, and Birdring shut it down fucking instantly on the upside for the last attack philadelphia fusion is going to have both their tank ults as well as their transcendence so we were talking about kind of like working around your tank ultimates as well as your transcendence so we'll have to see what's going on here profit has already used his blade so there's not going to be as much of a pressure on hotba and he can use it aggressively here but we'll have to see you know are they going to use their tank ultimates first are they going to use the transcendence first who knows usually you're going to be wanting to use your tank ultimates first very dangerous. They can't lose him here. 31 seconds on the clock. Oh, and they know exactly where he is. Carpe, that's a pretty late reset. They're going to lose Carpe. And this is problematic now for the Fusion. It takes approximately 10 seconds for players to respawn, and Carpe has to walk back. So the Fusion so only has one... So this is, again, London Spitfire knows that if they get a pick here, it's over. Like, completely over. Because it's about 15 seconds at a minimum, usually longer than that, in order to get back to a point. So... Yeah, here any pick is game over. Fight remaining in the round in so Profit and Birdring both picked up. Jester holding really, really aggressively here. A fuck ton of ults on the board for both teams. Access to all six of their players. So yeah, watch the tank ultimate usage and the transcendence usage here. If there was any time for the Philadelphia Fusion, it was right now. If they fail to take point B here, that could well be the... So Profit's kind of in trouble, not really. He's just trying to farm his blade. He's still got his dash. And with Sato having using his jump, he's not in trouble. Profit! He's going very deep there. Okay, so transcendence from Hotba here. Walk back. So the Fusion only have one real fight remaining in the round in which they have access to all six of their players. If there was any time for the Philadelphia Fusion, it was right now. If they fail to take point B. Hotba's back here. Ooh, here's Jester. Here's Jester. Yeah, could well be the Blam. And uh, Hotba's going to be like, nope, I'm not having any of this. He's getting low, waits for the last minute, transcends to move forward and contest the point. Six seconds remaining. Is anyone going to touch here? 
Very deep there. Sato has to touch, right? It's only Sato who can do it. He has Primal, so he should be able to. Jump, Primal, there you are. 0.4 seconds remaining. Nice. Sato throws himself at it. He gets there, though, and he triggers overtime now for the Philly Fusion. But the Nemo plays on the point just in time. Sato drops down. Dragon Strike comes through the point of Poker's trying to keep the dream alive as well. He sends up the self destruct. He doesn't find anything, though, and Jester deals with EQO. Now, Pedocean digs deep for the transcendence himself, and Poco is trying to keep this one going. But he's all on his own. One diva versus the world. Not enough to ability to deal with all these players. And that Dragon Blade, just for good measure, cut the cake, London Spitfire. They're very close to taking this map. So this is what should have happened on Dorado, right? We saw this on Dorado where they dove in really aggressively. They even used their Valkyrie aggressively to hold so far forward. But then they got counter pushed. And this is what happened here is the result that London Spitfire wanted on Dorado, but didn't get because Philly actually managed to full cap and that full cap actually caused Philly to win the map overall. So, you know, really this this entire match should have been like two three O's back to back. But anyway, so Sato does manage to touch, but he gets burnt down pretty hard while Jester is dealing with the back line because they don't have the luxury of having their tanks kind of peel for Hotbo after his transcendence is complete. Right, because we, yeah, so Hotbo is on uh, uh, Zenyatta here. So tanks have to move to contest, but they're moving to contest without their supports in the backline, who's still being just, like, fucked around with by Jester. Jester takes him out, and then at le their own leisure, kind of works their way back to the point to clean up. Okay, yeah, this is the bird ring replay. Watch this bird ring replay. 7% though, of point B. Watch this. This is crazy. London on the defensive end. They got so aggressive, you know, pushing through the initial choke going all the way into the back line. We can take a look at this highlight from Bird Ring. As you know, he's had himself a fantastic series. I think coming in, you look at this Bird Ring Carpe matchup, how good Carpe has been in the playoffs. Bird Ring has stepped up today. And he was the unknown factor, man, in a big way. He was the one player that we expected to hold to Carpe. Oh. And you can see here, it's tough with Hanzo because you do have drop on your arrows and there is a significant travel time. You need to lead your target a lot. Which is hard to do when you're jumping up and down and dashing and climbing walls and yeah. from the monkey bars. Well, you know, Bird Ring <laughs> coming into crazy. Overwatch League. Everybody was, you know, so high up. This guy, one of the best damage dealers in the world. Stage one. Please again? Reputation. Sure. Going all the way into the back line. We can take a look at this highlight from Bird Ring. It's pretty crazy. You know, he's had himself a fantastic series. I think coming in, you look at this Bird Ring Carpe matchup. How good Carpe has been in the playoffs. Bird Ring has stepped up today. And he was the unknown factor, man, in a big way. He was the one player Point. that we expected to hold to Carpe. Oh. And you can see here, it's tough with Hanzo because you do have drop Point. on your arrows and there is a significant travel time. You need to lead your target a yeah. lot. Which is hard to do when you're jumping up and down and dashing and climbing walls and swinging from the monkey bars. Good stuff. Well, you're birdering coming into... Okay, Tekov. Tekvov? Tekvov with the Prime for three months. Versus. So glad I found your stream a couple months ago. Great content, really good analysis and pieces of advice. Going to try hard top 500 this season on support with the help of your big brain. Cheers from Austria, Vienna. Cheers, bud. Thanks for the three months in a row. Softest blanket with the 500 bits says, Hey, Jane, I'm new here, but I've seen clips on YouTube and I appreciate what you do. Keep it up and you're awesome. Thanks, bud. Appreciate it. And Ryan GG with the Prime Sub, as well as Ray's Ghost Particle, Nordy, Dante, and Nam Namazu with the Prime Sub. Dark Rune with the 200 bits says, London bullied Philly so hard. Yeah, I'm actually surprised Dorado. You know, Dorado really came down to the third point and really won misplayed fight from London is what cost them Dorado because first and second both team basically just gave it up for free but yeah London bodied Philly pretty hard pretty consistently air dude with the two dollars says hey Jane new sub here I've been watching for a few weeks now and you have helped out tremendously I jumped from 2200 SR to 3100 SR thanks for the helpful coaching you're very welcome air dude welcome to welcome to diamond hope you make masters pretty soon Sam Rothstein with the 500 bits says, if I had to focus on only Tracer or McCree, who should I pick? I'm bronze, silver. Um, both are really good, but they are entirely kind of different play styles. If you had to focus only one, probably Tracer, uh, because you're going to have to learn your matchups a lot better. McCree is kind of like play safer, unless you're like a super aggressive flanky McCree. You know, you're playing safer, you're, you're a threat, with your flashbang and whatnot, but Tracer will teach you a lot more about decision making, movement, your matchups. So if you had, if I had to tell you to pick only one, uh, Tracer, absolutely. It's going to be harder in this meta, but I think it'll still, you know, it'll teach you more about the game if you play Tracer. 
Blaster with the tier one and Dark Rune with the 200 bits says, what is the cup and where can I get one? It's just a random cup from 7-Eleven. Uh, Air Dude with the Prime sub. Dozen Maho with the Prime for two months in a row. Kitsune with the 200 bits says, how do you... Oh, I already answered that one. We're already done the list. Okay. Then they're good. Okay. The Spitfire finished the map. This first series of our grand finals is over and the Spitfire will go home with a smile on their face into tomorrow after a 3-1 series. Softest Blanket with the 500 says, how do you, do you have any tips for a tank support flex? I've been trying to rank up, but I'm about to fall out of masters. I mean, Mercy, Ryan, and Winston. Do you have any tips for a tank support flex? Hmm. You know, one of the things that flex players usually run into it, one of the problems that flex players usually run into is the fact that they're always kind of like filling gaps and they're trying to usually rely on other people to be the playmakers. If you are a flex player, you can't just constantly trying to, you know, it's it's great to a point to be able to just support your teammates as best as you can. Make sure that your teammate who is a one trick, whatever the fuck, you know, has the best support that they have in order to win the game. But when you start getting into masters and GM or whatnot, just kind of keeping your team together isn't always going to be enough. You still need to be a playmaker, even if you are on, you know, main tank or main support or anything like that. So I'd work, in, I'd work on shot calling, like communicating your team's plans that'll help your team as a whole do better, as well as don't just try and fill the cracks, still try and make the plays yourself. Effect with the Prime for two months row says, it was a pleasure to meet you during the OWL Grand Finals. You as well. Still holding you on duoing once I... Ah, yes, yes. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for allowing us to slurp up your knowledge and keep up the great work. Cheers, Effect. Absolutely. You hit GM, it's duo. Should you play Warframe or OW? You should play Warframe so you can tell me if it's worth playing. Although Warframe is... I hear it's mostly solo and I don't really like solo player games. Well, it's been Philly versus the world for the whole season. Okay, so here's the initial scouting from Poco. Are we going to see any crazy scouting or whatnot from the London Spitfire? They are running... Strange. Are they trying to, like, mess with... I don't think we're going to see the same level of scouting. It'd be funny if they did, they did, like, the same sort of thing where they tried to fuck with the scouter by showing something and then changing off it immediately onto something else. Warframing is very fun. Hmm. I, I do want to give it a shot. I do want to give it a shot. And now it's Philly versus the odds. So they do kind of show, and then Poco backs off. Fury goes to chase. The Are they going to swap things up? Out of the gates. Yep. The so the Ana here, we're going to see this kind of Eichenwald strategy. Again, this is kind of the idea. The uh, setup, they go away. Go away. Advantage. So this is the same sort of composition as we saw New York run unsuccessfully, admittedly, quite a few times in the fact that uh, they're basically pr playing around Nanoblade. And the reason why you do this, more or less, is, again, in the same way that bird ring can like be a persistence hunter against neptuno there's nothing that can heal neptuno and not a lot that can really uh keep neptuno alive so you just you know farm blade do as best you can you have a little bit of a you know a, you have the ability to contest snipers you can't really duel them as well as like another sniper but you're basically playing around deleting neptuno from the game in this solo support composition Twenty eight hundred SR for an initial placement is extremely good. The average SR is twenty three fifty. Okay, so Nuss is already low. They're all kind of like stacked high left here. When your front line wants to go so aggressive. So Birdring's going around the left side. A little bit late here. Um, so I think Birdring was looking around here. But Gesture is jumping up onto the top here, and Birdring should already be up on these stairs. So if Gesture is jumping the high ground, he wants Birdring to be here right away to attack at the same time. But he's going to be late to the party. Play. So there's the jump. Birdring wants to be up there, but he's late. Gesture's jump is already in. The anti lands on Sato, but I'm pretty sure Sato still has four to five. Yeah, so everybody kind of drops off and doesn't get punished by that two-man dive. Carpe's on the other side, and Birdring's out of blinks, and Gesture doesn't have a jump. So Carpe's basically free-firing here, which is going to be a lot of trouble. Because if Fury and... If Fury and Gesture drop off this high ground, and, like, you know, Birdring goes left and Prophet goes right or something... Then Bedosin and Nuss are still up here, and Nuss specifically is going to be targeted by Carpe pretty hard. The high so, Gesture takes out Sato. That was based off of uh, Bedosin's anti-nade, which is good. Surprising that that happened. 
but uh, I thought that Sato would be within his team enough to stay alive, and it was, I thought he'd still had his Fortify, but maybe he had used it. Carpy takes out Nuss. You have this Tracer in play, and Carpe gets a big headshot there on the Nuss. As EQO takes Gesture out as well, you've lost your Mercy, you've lost your main... And Volskaya first is a lot like Dorado second, in the fact that there's parallel high grounds, and it's such a pain in the ass. So with parallel high grounds, you can think of this as Dorado second, um, or as Volskaya first. So this is like Ivy and this is Courtyard or something like If a Widowmaker is up here and then you get jumped by like Jester and Bird Ring, for example, then all the Widowmaker has to do is kind of like jump off. And then if you chase, they grapple back up onto this high ground and they can consistently stay on the high ground by just swapping between the two of them with grapple because you have to use a cooldown to commit onto them onto the first high ground. You can't chase them when they grapple to the second one. So this also happens on Volskaya, and if you don't kind of have a clean engage, it can be really, really difficult to, you know, continue putting pressure on uh, the Widowmaker as they're just flying around. Trying to have to move back. Is this loss? <laughs> but Ocean's dead here. He will fall at the hands of Sato, so now you don't even have an opportunity to, to reset fully. You have to wait even longer. We can take a look. Carpe's. Yeah, so Carpe is like, they can't contest Carpe here because they already used their cooldowns to contest him when he was on that TV. high ground. Uh, Sup, Nuss? So the Fusion. In this scenario, you can dive with three, for example. If you only go with two, can you not follow up with the grapple the other platform with a third person? Yes, you absolutely can. And they only dove with two here. They dove with Jester and Bird Ring. I think Fury ended up there as well, but Prophet could have been elsewhere. Yes, I'm not sure what Prophet was doing, but that is perfectly viable strategy this is the start that we're looking for we've seen them be good initially on their defensive attempts only to get run over by the spitfire later on in the round two minutes and 50 seconds that's what the spitfire had to work with there's plenty of time and they're wasting no time getting aggressive once more profit goes deep he was actually it's nice the hook broke hooked for a moment there but he managed to dodge around the corner and break the link between him and hotfire hotfire trying to get aggressive now but profit out the dragon fight. oh i remember this i remember face palming at this well, your entire strategy is based around basically deleting Neptuno. This could be nasty. He goes aggressive. He's got a damage boost given to him by his healer. But he's actually only looking at very durable targets. So as good as the Dragon Blade is. Yeah. Um, like, you go and you blade a fortifying Orisa who's still getting pocketed. Fuck, man. I... This is one of those situations where I just want to be XQC, right? Because I look at this and go, was there a strategy behind using Blade in that circumstance? What value is there to nanoblading, you know, tanks who still have their cooldowns instead of a Mercy? What is the strategy behind this? Is there any potential play? What were the communications here? What was the situation that caused them to act in such a counterintuitive way. And then if XQC was reviewing this, he'd just be screaming at the screen, just like, dog shit, dog shit. So I like, I just want to be XQC sometimes. <laughs> just, <laughs> just doesn't make sense here. And then Neptuno goes and get a 3K. Landing the big headshot there on <laughs> so the Philly Fusion. This is the style that we're looking for. We've seen them be good. Oh, yeah, and the death slam. And the... Only to get run over by the Spitfire later. It doesn't make sense to me. Two minutes and 50 seconds. And the, the, like, the worst part about this, too, is that New York happened to do this occasionally, too. Like, they'd finally farm up their Nano Blade. They'd use it. And this is like, this is watching, you know, actual garbage player. Yeah, so you are garbage, right? But this is like, this is the same, this composition gives me the same pain that Temple of Anubis first gives me. Remember in like stage one when we played Temple of Anubis and everyone was obsessed with putting like all six players with their Orisa on the high ground on Anubis first and it never fucking worked. Blow into your mic? No. Um, I just, I watched so many times and that time I was like, why would you do this? Even after the counter for it was developed, it was the same thing. It was like, why would you do this? Because, and I'm pretty sure Neptuno activates Valkyrie like immediately after Blade comes out, 
or was it Nano? I don't know. But Neptuno just like fucks the hell off with the Valkyrie. This pitfire have to work with. There's plenty of time, and they're wasting no time. Getting aggressive once more. Prophet goes deep. He was actually hooked for a moment there, but he managed to dodge around the corner. Like Hotba hasn't used vape. Break the link between him and Hotba. Yo, Poco can just fuck off. Sato hasn't used Fortify. You're powered up. Neptuno's not like they don't even know where Neptuno is. Like EQO's there. You could even get EQO. He's perfectly in dash range. Absolutely perfectly in dash range. Neptuno, Valk. Neptuno's like I am the fuck out of here. And uh, Prophet's like Monkey C. Monkey C. Sato. Let's go for it. And then Sato's like I'm gold and shiny. I'm gold and shiny. He's actually only looking at very durable. And then Neptuno's like, wow, these guys are bad. I'm going to just pistol them to death myself. One. Two. I just don't get it. But that is just not something we see. Mercy players with two kills in a fight. You're supposed to be a support player, a healer in the purest sense of the word. But Neptuno, he don't care for labels. <laughs> the big kill by EQO on the gesture as well. Gesture stays alive. You could probably turn this fight if you're London. You have the spawn advantage, you get right back, but now you have to wait for your main tank yet again. Neptuno nice nano blade nerd. Mercy not known for killing people, but Neptuno is on that hero, man. I know throughout Overwatch League, always coming up. Up with some big plays. No one Valkyrie. plays it that way. No one oh. plays Mercy in that particular manner. And what's so impressive oh, about Neptuno is that although he ostensibly spends more of his time trying to do damage to the enemy team, his healing numbers are actually comparable to other Mercies who don't play that. Oh, okay. He's a battle Mercy, but still manages Dragon to Dragon comes out just for kind of zoning, I guess. Incredible play. Neat. And now at London switching their comp, it tells you they want to focus down Sado, they want to get past this barrier. A lot of shit. This game is about, by the way. By the way, we are coming up on probably the best 60 seconds in Overwatch history. So this was the most exciting. The the like the stadium lost their fucking minds. So the place everyone was on their feet just losing their bloody marbles. It was it was amazing. I got no I I can't. Oof. Again, I'm just. Oh, I'm so looking forward to it. Build breaking potential here out of the London Spitfire. They're the double snipers plus Roadhog. Really good at putting down a lot of high damage on so those. So 70 shields. seconds left. Marissa can't keep that shield up time. as high as she would like. London's got to make something barrier. happen. You definitely don't want to get full held by Sky at first. Nice little hook. Nuss drops. Burning drops. This is not looking good. That's another 15 seconds at minimum, which means there's only one fight remaining there's only one fight remaining we only got 60 seconds on the clock this is big this is one huge. this is big stay in this one now and Bedosin gets caught out and they have potential to find they the knew he was top. still there ah oh, now they're only gonna have 30 seconds left with him. <laughs> with Bidoshin, although he might be the schoolyard bully and bigger than the other okay. ones okay the, the earliest this next attack can happen is at 30 seconds and the scary part what are the ultimates at? They've got dragon. So the defenders have dragon, they have sights, and they have whole hog. So they don't have, they'll probably get, uh, they'll probably get Valkyrie as well, which is huge. The Spitfire, to their credit, they have bomb and a Valkyrie of their own. For London is you switch your comp maybe a little bit late in the game, and you may not get all of these ultimates. Okay. So right now you do have Valkyrie, you have a self-destruct, but you do have that big dragon strike. 30 you seconds know, remaining. Everybody off. This is so big. Really kicking up so Valkyrie comes out from Nuss and bomb is launched. Now Carpe gets profit. So London Spitfire, London Spitfire need to win 
a five on six with 22 seconds remaining. And Ikkyo drops the dragon to split. Defensively speaking, that's the first pick in the fight. That's what they need to stay in this series. The Spitfire will be desperately trying to... 15 seconds left. 15 seconds left. 6v5. They survive the dragon. Here comes Fury's bomb. No halt. They res Prophet. And Fury's bomb picks up Neptuno. And Poco's met. Forgot about that one. So this one's from a 5v6. Now, EQO does take out Nuss. So neither team has a mercy. But Jester and Vidosin take out EQO and Poco. Mini Poco. So they went from 5v6, Fury's bomb demecking Poco and killing Neptuno. Even though EQO answered back with a kill onto Nuss, it didn't happen. They like it was too late. Nuss dying to EQO was too late to actually make a difference here. Now Nuss has swapped onto Lucio here, but it's not quite over yet. So they're gonna try and snowball this. They're absolutely gonna try and snowball this because look at their ultimates. They've got three. Nuss is back onto Mercy here, and he's gonna be able to Guardian Angel back in. So they've got four ultimates here. Fury using that bomb means that they are going to be able to snowball into second point. It's not over yet. It's not over yet because Neptuno is about to have a really fucking bad day. Neptuno is about to have a really bad day. <laughs> so not only do they have four ultimates, but Birdring pops sights and takes out Neptuno. So this could go from a 22 second full hold into a steamroll on second. And they're going in. Supercharger is popped. They're going to have Whole Hog to clear the point. They supercharge the dragon as well. Here's the Whole Hog. Sato is down. Poco is down. But Poco drops a bomb and counters onto Nuspidos and takes out the super. But, but, Prophet says, fuck this shit. We're winning right here. And he takes out Ikkyo and Neptuno. So Prophet is the only one alive on the point. And they can't get back. Birdring's here too. And he doesn't body block Poco. Look at this. And he doesn't body block Poco. Are you fucking kidding me? I've never seen that before. Billy tanks make it back though, so you will get a hold for the time. What is the Billy fusion? But Prophet and Birdring almost just killed everybody on the point. And took it there. Oh, just this is honestly like the best 60 seconds of Overwatch. Just a fucking was so good. Watch this again. I'm just gonna shut up. Just watch this. Watch how glorious this 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 was. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get out of here. See you in a bit, guys. But you do have that big dragon strike from EQO. It could split everybody off. This is so big. Really kicking up a notch again. Defensively speaking, that's the first pick in the fight. That's what they need to stay in this series. The Spitfire will be desperately trying to bring Prophet back into the fray, but they might just have to wait for him to respawn, which is going to be costly. Oh no, Neptuno! He falls to the self destruct of Fury! That could be the opening the Spitfire are looking for. The Fusion are now missing their main healer. Hotba waits in the wings to try and find the right pick, but I don't think that's the target he was looking for. Now Bidoshin and Gesha set up on the point. Sato is off in the distance, but he can't assist. Lana Spitfire have numbers now on the point, and we're into overtime, but it looks like they might have just broken through. At the 11th hour, London, gonna be staying in this one by the looks of things. Uh -huh. Point A now under duress, and they will be captured by London. They will be able to continue playing the map, and now, Philly are starting to sweat, Matt. 57.1% is all London need Defensive. on that second point to win the map. Dude, if Yuri doesn't land that self-destruct that kills Neptuno and Dmex Poco, that is probably the Philadelphia Fusion forcing a game five here. Is to be burning takes out Neptuno. That's huge. And London, they know it's a big opportunity now. There's no one to resurrect Neptuno because he's the one that's supposed to be doing that. Hot was knocked away. Jesse gets aggressive in the Fusion. Realize they're going to try and hold on. Oh no! Bogo hits the double bomb. The will be enough. It looks like it will. He tries staying on his feet. Can't be taken down by Burning. The Prophet. Are you kidding me? All on his own. The Lone Sniper. He finds two crucial kills and a Spitfire are on the threshold attack in the series. I 
I've never seen that before. Billy Tanks make it back though, so you will get a hold for the time oh, being. What or is the this? Billy Fusion, but profit and murdering almost just killed. Him. Man, I was sitting beside I was sitting beside AKM, Rockus, and Sinatra, and they just fucking. It was so funny. Everyone was just like, could not believe what was happening. It was utterly. Seriously, some of the, since somebody somebody linked me the French commentary, I want to watch the French commentary for this. Pour sans l'uti et plus de 4 minutes. Ouais, 3 back. minutes 45 et salut Neptuno qui vient de mourir face à Birdring. C'est l'opening kill, c'est lance de Goin évidemment forcément le super chargeur qui est envoyé, va falloir trouver un le dragon bleu qui est très bien placé. Les London Pitfire qui sont en train de le faire, peut-être une Poco bombe pour venir sauver le coup. Oh Double kill de Poco On bat avec les carrisseurs qui temporisent Et encore une fois, Gaël Gaël qui sauve le même oh Easily, easily, easily like the greatest 60 seconds of Overwatch that ever happened. Just, whew, whew, man, so good, so good, so good. There were just so many just back and forth clutch plays, like Fury's bomb. Ikyo try answering back with Nuss to make it even the first point in question about like are they even going to be able to cap this and then from almost getting full held to then Birdring opens it up with the shot onto Neptuno to open up the chance for the exact same thing to happen on second point and then Poco looks like it's going to be shut down with counter bomb but then with like the solo sniper on the point as the time is ticking up as Poco comes back in and just the panic to not body block Poco from standing on the point just oh it's the you have never gone such extreme emotional swings from one side to the other but like no matter who you were cheering for feel the refusion it's not like it was like yay London yay London and things were like hyping up and up and up it was like yay London yay Philly yay London yay Philly yay London yay Philly it's just, oh man, it was so exciting to watch. Do so exciting. Do, do Korean? Does somebody have the Korean top. version? I don't have the Korean version. Who has the Korean version? Link it in chat. Anybody have the Korean version? I don't want to go find it. Somebody will link it to me, I'm sure. I guess nobody has it. Oh, there it is. Somebody found it. Somebody found it. What is this? Ooh, this is the Korean version. Nice. See, chat is all-knowing. Never question chat. Oh man, it ends right before Poco recontests. That's too bad. Still a pretty cool clip. Still a pretty cool clip. Okay. They basically just shout. <laughs> Anyway, the rest of this map isn't super exciting. Like, they do eventually cap it. Not to spoil it or anything, but... Nothing in this entire series trumps that, like, 60 seconds of Overwatch. Have you seen the Sri Lankan version? No, Dave, I have not. Thank you for your suggestion, though. Thank you for your suggestion. Look at all the assists from EQO onto the Fury. It's so funny. How could he? How could Prophet have body blocked and stayed on point? Birdring was up too. Or sorry, not Bird. Um, fuck. Words are hard. Right, Birdring's still here. Birdring was still here. So Fury being removed will be enough 
to force them to take a step back. Now lose bit ocean towards the end here as well. You're gonna have bird ring, will earn himself the dragon strike for the next fight though. Oh, you're dead. Oh, 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 oh. From the high ground. But just think about how close London was to finishing this. You know, 56.4% to 57. Real is uh Neptuno does earn himself Valkyrie. Valkyrie was used there for the London Spitfire, so pretty big hole there for Billy. Yeah, so despite London getting you know more than 33% or one third of the point captain progress, they didn't hit the milestone of 66%, they would have won either way. So they get to keep 33% of that progress. You see that one third of that circle is colored in there, so that's what they start from on their next capture. Mm, okay, attack. so they get some profit on the flank, but it's going to be contested by Carpe. Ooh, Carpe didn't know he was there though. It's gonna be him versus Carpe for survival right now. Profit's clutch is That's pretty crazy. So Barrage there. It's a one for one though. And the Philly Fusion getting the lead in these kills. They're gonna be happy enough. <laughs> Fury Poor Fury. Right and same situation, right? Like they've got one him. tick, but they're under he's a minute left, Fury. but. And the worst part about it is that this highlight wasn't caught on stream. So, Prophet clutches this so hard here. Gesture with primal rage. A lot of healing from Bedoshin. Gesture the larger HP people should be able to stay alive. Poco with this Here we go. Prophet on the platform. Here he goes. For the Philly Fusion. Neptuno. Birdring on the McCree. During this fight, if it extends. Also to remind you, Philly Fusion on defense, they will have that spawn advantage. Spawn much closer for Philly. Is this the secret weapon? So they used Transcendence to kind of get in here because the hook was going to land onto, I don't know who it landed on, but either Bedosin, whether it was him getting hooked or Nuss hook didn't, getting hooked, it didn't matter because he needed to use Trans to keep his team alive here. For the London Spitfire, is this the and Prophet lands a kill on Neptuno. I'm just going to let it play because they show a replay of this later. Just solo 5k, no worries. Solo 5 kill, or fi solo 5k. Yeah, it's, it's shown in the post-match. Let's go find it. Where is it? Give me the profit point of view. Gimme. Gimme. Tied up one of yes, yes, yes. Show me profit. Ridiculous. That's not profit. How many heroes he can play? <laughs> so this is profit, but it's not full sky. Just causing problems. Show me the five K. As you saw, it was yeah. Up map three. So now you're out Woo. this point. We go to Vault Sky Industries, and it looks like Philly was going to get held strong until this play. Philadelphia Fusion. This one was sweet. They came out with this triple tank, triple support composition. <laughs> Poor Bedosin. Beautiful self-destruct by Too Poco. funny. Such that was a really well placed self-destruct too. That was harder to place than you would imagine. This really this frag, the London Spitfire and then onto Bedosin as well, right? Boop. Came out to play. He's and then always boop. the X factor for the teams. You heard Uber and Mr X talk about. It. We never know quite what we're gonna get from this guy, but we got something delicious today. And this is what London needed to do if they were to take this win today, and that was Birdring and Profit going toe to toe with Carpe and EQL. And they definitely did that today. Absolutely fantastic performance. And we also got to see some fantastic Neptune nice plays as well. I mean, this guy on the Mercy, he, he never fails to disappoint, uh, never fails to. to <laughs> Gets nuts as well with a singular headshot. Love it. You go, you like this is my first here. language, but there we go. And, uh, I mean, it was just wonderful stuff all around by London. Bringing and, and this now, is Neptuno when he was trying to hide, Fusion, right? Neptuno almost yes, got away. Almost. Didn't count, though. And, and here's Poco's counterbomb. With only 10 seconds left, Blam. Gets picked, gets picked this again, was insane. And they only just clutch it by that Poco 2K plus the, uh, the Arisa uh, ultimate right. as well. Right. And just nice able stuff. To do it. But Profit, man, what did he do with this? Here? What was this? This entire clip's nuts, honestly. It one v five, the That's most best That's play ridiculous. of the game. Best play of the game by far. Arguably play the best play of the match. For Gets sure. Poco before Profit he remaxes. 
one from London. <laughs> Good Lord. You look back at the footage yep. of this and think that they threw it away because with only 10 seconds left, Neptuna gets picked, Neptuna gets picked this again. Was insane. And they only just clutch it by that Poco 2K. Plus so here it the, is. Uh, the Arisa, uh, Profit gets Neptuno. Well and just able to do it. But Profit, gets man, Carpe. Oof. A one clip. Hotba with a stick nuts. pulse. Honestly, one v five, the most best play of the game. Best play of the game by far. Arguably the best play of the match. For him, Remax. Profit was on fire. Everyone. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Okay. Goodness. Let me see if. Uh... Cool. Wow. Okay. So that was day one. That was day one. Goodness gracious me. What a map, or what a series. Uh, Rewatching it again, I actually am kind of surprised at how. Um, how dominant London was. Watching it in person, I didn't think that uh, London was as dominant, but uh, yeah, so they definitely, they definitely were.